everybody. This is Dr. Shi Jun Wang from Weber State University. Uh, in today's lecture, I'm going to share with you guys how did I learn Opus 25 number one. As many of the subscribers can see that I changed my recording location from my small office to this choir rehearsal room uh, with a bigger piano. Uh, I hope the the recording quality, the sound, the tone quality can improve a little bit. As some people complain that the piano in my office, when after I record it, the effect is a little bit dry. All right. Um, this is the first piece of Opus 25. Um, and the publishing time between the first set, Opus 10, and the second set Opus 25 is three to four years apart. But the, in, in general, the style of 25 is more lyrical, more mild. Um, it's not as virtuosic as the first set. And if we, we take a look at who these pieces are, were, were dedicated, the first set is, was dedicated to Franz Liszt. And, and we know for certain that Chopin really adored the way Franz Liszt played his pieces, especially these etudes. And he said, oh, I really envy the way Liszt plays. And we know that Chopin was not famous for virtuosic display, right? His, his playing is very sensitive, has a lot of nuances, but on the soft side, but Liszt, on the contrary, was like a brilliant virtuosic. Um, the 25, interestingly enough, was, was uh, dedicated to uh, Marit Abu, who was Liszt's lover, and actually who introduced uh, acquaintance between uh, Chopin and George Sand. So that's very small social circle uh, that everybody knows, everybody, list girlfriend knows Chopin and, and the, the famous George Sand. Um, we know that Liszt and Marie Lagou uh, later on got into trouble because Agou is a married woman. So they actually flee, or they, they traveled outside of, of Paris. Uh, but somehow these pieces uh, dedicated to Agu is somehow more less list like more more singing more lyrical uh, and and more uh, tender or maybe because Chopin now grow a bit uh, is not as fascinated as the brilliance because when uh, uh, when he composed the first two he was barely The title of Opus 25, number one, was actually given by uh, Schumann. He called it Aeolian Harp. Um, as we know that Aeolian Harp is really not the, 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 the image of like a harp, uh, like the orchestral instrument harp. Um, when I was studying at Juilliard, I, I went to this harp solo recital, right? a rare thing uh, for, for, for me coming uh, from, from a music high school. Um, I've always only heard harp in the orchestral uh, pieces, but for, for me the first time hearing harp, it's, it's a virtuosic instrument. Uh, a lot of virtuosic displays, a lot of accented uh, playing that you cannot find in the Aeolian. Aeolian harp is an ancient Greek instrument that is actually the, the sound produced by wind. So it's a combination of wind instrument and string instrument. And one characteristic of, of this instrument is that it is not capable of having accents. Right? When the wind blows, the string sounds. And, and it's gradual. Right, it probably has a, a 
a gentle crescendo in it, and all the strings sound simultaneously. Um, so we can see that you, it's very hard to find an accent in this piece. <laughs>
I think that's all I, I want to share uh, on, on this piece. It's really not a terribly difficult piece, but it practices us the evenness of fingers, the flow, the long phrases of the flowing melody. But before I finish this, uh, this week's video, I, I do want to share you one experience I had in the library of Eastman School. One time I was checking out something and it turned out to be a very, very old score. Um, and then the print of the score, I, th I thought, uh, I remember it was uh, like a, a Schubert forehand, uh, the F minor, the famous F minor forehand score. Um, and it was the horizontal printing, we call the landscape printing, right? Not two or three measures per line, but more like eight measures per line with two or three lines each page. And just out of curiosity, I asked the librarian, why is this score not normal? And he said, actually, that was the normal way of printing scores in Schubert's time, in Chopin's time. And somehow, the publisher decided to do it vertically later. And he asked me, which one you think is better? And instantly I said, oh, of course, the, the, the landscape printing is much better because then the line is not cut off. Or mentally we see, we don't want to cut off uh, the, the lines in between. And probably many, many of the long slurs that Chopin wrote was cut off by the vertical way of layout the, the pages. So I urge everybody to play this as a continuous, a long line, long, kind of like a Rahmaninoff way of raising, right? Two, three pages without a break. But with that in mind, we still need to show the, the difference between, or the, the, the breaks between phrases. We can't just play this like a typewriter type or play this like a, like a train that never stops. But uh, in between phrases, we have to maybe do with timing, maybe we do with changing of colors, but uh, for instance, between fourth and fifth measure, <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you guys next.